it's something that I've always watched from the earliest times I can remember. And when it came back on our screens after that long break, uh, it came back so strongly. It hasn't been as strong in the last few years, I think, uh, as it has been at some time. But I'm really, really hopeful that there's going to be a kind of new lease of life, a regeneration, if you like, not just of the, the actor, but of the programme. The, the music of it still uh, evokes something so, so deep. I think I must have been watching it even before I understood the words. Uh, it was on the, the TV when I was very wee. Uh, I think I remember some of the late Tom Baker stories from watching them the first time around. But as far as I remember it, it was when the character regenerated into Peter Davison. Uh, not that I was immediately enthralled with Peter Davison's character. It took me a little while to get used to it. But the fact that this character does change, uh, that this was something so different than any other uh, you know, fiction, any other TV programmes that I was watching, uh, that's what got my attention and got me to realise what it was. And, you know, since going back to watch all of the, the earlier stuff before my time, it's the stuff before I remember it that I consider the real heyday. It has been amazing. I, I think um, some of the problems that I've had in, in the last few years are about presenting the Doctor as though uh, she, he is a hero character. Uh, I don't think the Doctor ever really was a hero in that sense. In fact, if you look at the really early stuff, the Doctor's quite a disturbing, grumpy, uh, irascible, cantankerous old bugger. And you know, that was part of the charm. This is an alien, after all, and inevitably an alien would have very different values than ours. And sometimes those values come across uh, in a way that, that seems to jar with what you would expect from a, a kind of hero character. Um, but the the stories very often in the, the very early days were a bit more explicitly educational. They were exploring a historical context uh, in order to tell the audience, tell the, the children a little bit about that, that chapter of history. Or the Doctor would explain a bit of science uh, in a way that was, uh, again, a, a little bit educational. There's umpteen obscure little bits of sci-fi from that time, that most of which have been forgotten, that are even more like that, as though science fiction is a science lesson um, and so you know, taking that uh, you know, very often as a starting point and then the writers would be allowed to have uh, free reign with the science fiction a little bit more uh, and because it became this incredible storytelling medium where you have character with some companions in a magic box that just appears wherever and whenever it's the most adaptable and flexible storytelling medium that you can have I think very often, at its best, it's told smaller stories that don't require massive sets or special effects. And I, I think when they throw too much money at it, it doesn't always help. And that's one of my worries about where it's going next, because there does seem to be a lot of money in, into it now. And from the look of the trailer, I mean, it looks amazing in terms of production values, but since when did UNIT have an Avengers-style skyscraper in the city? You know, this is supposed to be a, an obscure... Uh, you know, ignored branch of the, of the British establishment that's got no resources. Anyway, I, I look forward to seeing what they're going to do with it. But I hope that they manage to retain something of that slightly homemade feel uh, that I, I think always had a, it felt a bit genuine. It felt a little bit um, within reach, even though it's telling stories on, you know, other, other parts of the universe or in other periods of time that are out of reach. The, the way it was playing with imagination felt within reach. Oh, uh, I should have I should have expected you were going to ask something. Uh, I, I, it's got to be forward. It's got to be forward. Uh, I mean, particularly as Greens, uh, we, we're sometimes portrayed as the, the kind of Cassandra, the, the doom monger who says the world's doomed, it's all going to hell. There, there, there was this amazing um, uh, speech by um, Krista Reckles, the Doctor, uh, in, in one of the first episodes after it came back, where he says, human beings, we're always so worried the world's going to end that we never take the time to imagine what happens if we make it. And yeah, if you if you put me in front of that, that console, I'd, I'd want to go forward into I don't know what and, and find out, you know, do we make it?
do human beings actually manage to find a way to build a world that's worth living in, a world that's going to be safe and secure uh, for everybody? What do we do with our human imagination and creativity a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand years from now? And now Shuti Gatwa as well. Yeah, we've, we've, we've punched above our weights in terms of providing time lords to the universe uh, in, in Scotland. Um, and it's, uh, it's a far cry from the, the days when uh, uh, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart uh, would um, stride around wearing a kilt in, uh, what was that? Was that the Zygons? Which episode was that? Um, both, uh, both the Brigadier and, uh, and the, the Doctor in those areas had um, some slightly questionable uh, tra traditional Scottish garb for a couple of episodes and um, I think having some really great uh, actors uh, from Scotland taking on the role has, has been really amazing. I got so tired of hearing uh, people complain about, I mean some of them were complaining just because a woman was, was playing the part, uh, which is absurd. Um, some of them were complaining that there was any kind of political content in it at all, which is absurd if you're a sci-fi fan generally, but it's also absurd if you're a Doctor Who fan. It's always been there, and very often it's been at its best. You know, one of the classic episodes that was referenced in that Children in Need clip the other day, Genesis of the Daleks, it's about fascism, and it's about the philosophical questions about how could it ever be ethical to commit genocide? No matter how evil your enemy is, have I the right to join these two wires and commit genocide? You know, that's a deeply philosophical and political issue. You know, this, this was made not very many years after uh, people would have seen, uh, you know, Nazi uniforms as a very real threat, uh, as a, a, a reality. Uh, and to see um, Davros and his, and his uh, acolytes uh, walking around in what looked very much like Nazi uh, uniforms, uh, and to see these Daleks, I mean, even going back to the 60s when the, the Daleks first appeared, it's very clear, this is a tank. This is a, this is a metaphor for military industrial complex uh, and, for, and for the way that physical and military power is abused. You've seen stories, uh, you know, even if the language in the 70s, for example, uh, wouldn't be seen as uh, politically correct these days, and, and you might criticise the language, some of the stories about colonialism, with arrogant, violent men, uh, middle-aged men with British public school accents, acting as colonial oppressors on other worlds, and the doctor would side with the, the underdogs, you know? Um, I think my, my favourite example of those, those kind of bits of political content uh, would have to be the Green Death, not just because it's an environmental theme. You have this evil chemical company uh, in, uh, in Wales polluting the, the ground and uh, creating these giant maggots. Uh, and the, the group of uh, kind of hippie radicals campaigning and protesting against them. But at the end, you discover that the real power behind the evil corporation is a psychopathic computer whose initials are B-O-S-S. -S. This is the boss class polluting our world and oppressing the, the people who are protesting against it. How could anyone imagine that there hasn't been politics uh, as part of Doctor Who's story and that the Doctor as a character instinctively sides uh, with anti-authoritarian causes, uh, with the, the, the idea of, of, of everybody's life being valuable and mattering uh, that, that human beings and human lives are not just something abstract or something statistical to be dismantled, uh, and uh, a profoundly anti-war, anti-violence message as well. For me at the moment, there are probably three jumping in points if, if someone's never watched any before. You could go with Rose. You could go with the first episode from the reboot, uh, the first Christopher Eccleston, because that's really about reintroducing the character to, to an audience that hadn't seen it. And I think the Russell T. Davis and the, the, the people who were making it then were aware that bringing this character back to the screen, you had to explain why he's been away for so long. And you had to do that to an audience where you had parents who remember growing up watching the earlier stuff with their kids who've never 
seen this before. I think about a week after that had been on, uh, I was walking about in Glasgow and um, uh, I saw a, a kind of a mum with her kid and she's feeling a bit harassed and she's got her bags and everything and the kid's pulling her back um, and he, he keeps pointing at this big blue plastic bin <laughs> on the street. He says, mummy, mummy, it's the TARDIS. I thought, yes, we've got another generation hooked. <laughs> Um, so that's a great starting point. Or go right back to the start, right back to uh, the, the original episode, which uh, sadly, because some uh, selfish person is, is manipulating uh, intellectual property, uh, property rights, that one isn't online, but you can find it in many, many places. Go back and watch the very, very original episode. The other one I would suggest is the, the first Pertwee episode, first colour episode, and it's also one where they were really reinventing the series. Place him on Earth, make him an exile on Earth, uh, and create this relationship with a, a kind of cast of characters around him with, with units. So those, I would say, are three really good places to start. I mean, I think objectively it's got to be Tom Baker, but I have a real soft spot in my heart for Patrick Troughton. And I think part of that is because so much of it is still missing. I've been enjoying the, the reanimated versions of the, the missing episodes that they've been doing, uh, you know, some better than others. Uh, and I've just been eking out uh, the, 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 the last few episodes of The Underwater Menace that I haven't watched yet. That one uh, was just published a, a wee while ago. Oh, I mean, a, a TARDIS is big enough to have a bike shed in it. So, you know, why do you have to choose between them? Uh, the, the, the Daleks, uh, I think, are the, the classic villain. But I, again, I come back to this thing about telling small stories. Less is more. Don't throw a million billion side men against a hundred billion Daleks in, in the way that's been done a bit recently sometimes. In the reboot series, the best Dalek story was with the first one, with one Dalek in it. And that's that's where these, these kind of villains, I think, are at their best, where it's it's about the the threat that they represent rather than just the spectacle of putting more money on the screen, you know? I was at an event last year where it was delightful uh, to see Peter Capali and Shuti Gatwa together just after he'd been confirmed as the, as the next Doctor and uh, there, there was some, some playful kind of moments between them of, of uh, one Doctor offering advice to another. I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to do that. I, I'm really looking forward to his performance. I mean, some of the work, particularly later on in, in sex education, was, I mean, powerful, powerful stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. And I hope he allows the spirit of previous Doctors to come through in his performance in some way and uh, to see the character as... Uh, disturbing, uh, not just as a, a kind of dashing hero running up and down corridors, but allow what's odd and unsettling uh, about the Time Lord to come through.